welcome to the Sweet Pea and Chickadee YouTube channel. And today is January 9th and it is Saturday and we are coming to you from Haymarket, Virginia. And it is episode four. I'm Brooke. And I'm Kimberly. You can find us on Instagram at Sweet Pea and Chickadee. And you can also follow me on Ravelry at K Armini. Just first initial, last name. And I'll put all that stuff below for you to see. Happy New Year, everyone. Um, 2020 is definitely in the past. It's over. Yep, and now we're probably in part two, but we don't know that yet. So, <laughs> yeah, can we skip to 2022? Yeah, I think we should just skip. Um, yeah, I mean, I probably we probably knew that was coming. Yeah, I think it was kind of like instincts because, you know, COVID wasn't just going to like be like, all right, guys, 2020, my year's up. All right, got to go, guys. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be like that, so. <laughs> but we're here. We have to go through 2021. Let's just make the best of it. And let's knit our way through 2021, Brooke. Hey, solid. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what am I wearing? I am wearing my Opposites Do Attract Cowl by Brian and Terry Haynes. They are a married couple. They're so cute. They also have a yarn dyeing business. And Brian sells and makes his own bags, project bags. So it's Uncle Brian's bags, I believe. They're really cool. You guys should check them out. I'm actually using At Haynes House Yarns as well. Um, this is in DK. It's basically a tube. So you knit in the round a tube and then you seam it together at the end. I love this. It's I definitely love, one of my favorites. Yes. I did not block this because I just liked how squishy it was and it was just for me. So I just didn't block it, but you definitely can. Um, I know that at the seaming point, I probably would want to block it just because it gets a little cinched. It's not too bad, actually. I've actually worn it out a little bit. So right there, you do a um, provisional cast on, and then you kitchener stitch at the end. So it's really, it's really easy, and it's fun to try different things all in one, and it's just so nice and squishy. All right, guys, so first up is finished objects. Um, I don't have that much. Okay, technically I have a couple, but they were Christmas gifts since our last episode. The first one uh, you guys have been seeing are Damon socks I was making for my husband. It was in the Lopi Hostaband yarn. Um, he loved them, I think a little too much. Like he overstated his likeness and kept talking about them. So I'm not sure if he really likes them or he's trying to make me feel better. He loved them too much. Like, and then, then it makes you second guess, like did he really even like them or he was just like saying that? Yeah, cause I mean. I don't know. I mean, But yeah. I mean, he wants more socks. So I guess, you know. It works. He liked them. Um, so that will, and I'll include a picture here for you guys to see what they look like. I didn't take a very good picture. It was like, oh, I haven't taken a picture of these and I have to wrap them tonight kind of thing. So I took yeah. a picture of them in the box, but maybe later I'll be able to get them um, a good picture of them. Uh, the next thing I made was a blanket. I almost forgot for my sister. Um, I made a, one of those giant chunky blankets. First, she sent me this picture, which I'll, I think I'll include here. Of like this great blanket that was made out of roving. Um, knitters know that roving is not exactly the sturdiest blanket. You can't necessarily wash it. And I know she's got like kids and pets, and so I thought, okay, she'll basically she wants a chunky knit blanket. Um, so what I did was I used the jumbo yarn that you can get at Michaels. Um, and what I did was I got enough to hold it double, so it's like double jumbo basically. Yeah to make the big chunky, um, like the knit stitches. And I did it by hand, it only took a few hours. It was really great. I'll include a picture here, it's not the best. There's one in progress picture and then one kind of finished. I mean, I really wish I took a better picture, but Brooke wants one. I love it. I actually, <laughs> it was like the week after Chris, I think it was like the week like after Christmas. Um, I stayed the night at my aunt's house and then I actually took a nap the next day and under that blanket, Mm, 10 times like it was like the, one of the best naps I've had and then I slept that night with it and it was very nice and now I want one and they're really easy to make and pretty cheap and pretty quick and the thing is I because I got under it to like test out the length when I was <laughs> making it so I stopped and made sure it was long enough for me which she's shorter than me so I knew if it was long enough for me it definitely would be long enough for her and I instantly almost fell asleep like I was like oh this is so nice because it's, it's, so it's a little weighted it feels a little weighted I know it is I don't know why because the yarn itself is not that heavy but just the double and like the way it is it just feels a little bit weighted which is cozy and it's got like all those like like nooks and crevices where you just want to like put your hands in them and squish I don't know I don't know what it is but it's so nice. It was really great. And it was only, it didn't take me that long actually at all. So 
Okay, and then the next thing I, it's, it's a faux and a whip because I'm making my Radvent throw. So as you guys know, if you're new, you don't know. Um, and if you're new, welcome. But we are making, we, I am making. Okay, the, I help. I make, am emotional support. She's emotional support. She gets this, I like, look at this square, Brooke. And she's like, oh, that's nice. And she talks math with me. She's like, okay, so basically. <laughs> I do. I have to talk it out. Because actually. Mm -hmm. It helps. I did it at midnight. And I did it while I was talking to Brooke the other day. There's other things. If I talk it out, all of a sudden, I, I answer my own question half the time while I'm talking it out. Or people will come up with, to me with like these, like. Like at midnight, suggestions. I'm like, oh yeah, why didn't I think about that? But just talking it out with people and almost just talking out out loud mm -hmm. really helps when it comes to knitting, especially. especially. But I have jinx. <laughs> <laughs> but I have a whole bunch of radvent squares. Yay! These are all the ones that I have blocked. I believe there's like oh, 19 or something. No, there's not 19. They there's like smell good. 16 in there that are blocked. I know they do smell good. That's the wool wash I use. All right, and then um, I use a tough wool. Um, and then here are the ones that haven't exactly been blocked yeah, yet. Those ones that have not been blocked. And I have two more to make. So I'm almost done. But, so the original Radvent throw by Amba O'Brien, by the way, and it's amazing, um, is supposed to be a four by six square. So 40 inches across, 50, 60 inches long, four by six. I'm making it mine a five by six because I do have enough yarn. Um, if, if you're new, I had two advents, two 12-day advents that I had for the holidays this year. They're both from Yarn, Yarn Cafe Creations. The first one was a 12-day advent for Strawberry Shortcake. And then the next one was a 12-day advent for My Little Pony. It was so fun. Brooke got to like guess I got every... Guess. It was not good. It was very <laughs> sad. Well, the first one the, was a... I like, got it the first try. Because it was like a new generation pony, like the it newer was, ones. It uh, was G6. And because when I was younger, I was obsessed with My Little Pony. And then, but then the next ones. All like, the other ones were all from my generation. It was so, I was and so I mad. don't remember the names, but I do remember as soon as I saw them, I was like, wait, I think I might have had that one. I know, one. and then mom like looked them up. She's like, you should know this one. I was like, okay, mom. <laughs> I said, look at the color. What does it look like? And I always guessed um, peppermint because that's the only old, that was her older one pony I knew. And there was never a peppermint. <laughs> was, I know. Like, I was thinking there would finally be a peppermint. <laughs> the last one was mistletoe, though. I did. I guess I was like another lot. Christmas word. Let's go, <laughs> let's go with this. But it's really a great, easy uh, square knitted pattern. You're gonna join with crochet, which is fine with me because I crochet too. Um, and I only have two left. So as I was saying, I have two 12-day advents, um, 11 mini skeins each, and two full skeins. So instead of doing 24 mini skeins like a normal advent, I had 22 plus two full. So what I'm doing to make up for those extra six squares, so I'm doing a five by six instead of a four by six, I'm doing four, instead of one square per full skein, I'm doing four squares per full skein. So the first um, full skein was, this one was the strawberry shortcake one, Brooke. I, this is like the ones I don't have blocks, that's the newest ones I just did. That was the strawberry shortcake um, square. The next one, I already have two done. I only need two more. This was the My Little Pony full skein. So I'm making four each of those. And then I was trying to figure out how to position them on my blanket. And actually, from the last podcast we did, one of our viewers commented and was giving me all these tips, which is great. I love having you guys comment mm -hmm. and interact with us. It was so us. nice. It was, I was like, oh, it's a great idea. So what she said um, was to put, you make your four, and one skein has the four, one in each corner, and the other four go in the middle. And I was like, oh my gosh, like kind of like a quilty design. I love mm -hmm. that. And then I was talking it through with my Knit Night folks, and I knew that I couldn't put four in the middle if it was a five by six. I could do it on a four by six, not a five by six. And then someone was like, why don't you just put a square in the middle, and then it's like a plus sign around it. I'm like, oh my gosh, genius, mind blown, right here. Last time, if you guys recall, I was debating on whether to do the gray yarn, like a light gray or a cream color to be the joining of, or in the border of the Radvent throw. I um, mean, I was leaning more towards the light gray. I really like the light gray, but then I opened up like the last ones, like this one, the last ones of my Advent, and here's one which I love. Isn't that so pretty? It's like I was a, thinking, I was thinking, like, you know what, actually the, the cream would probably be better. And then I took a closer look. So here's what I'm using. It is the Ultra Wool, the Fine, the Fingering, and Broco. Brooke, you want to show? 
And I looked at it and it's really not a cream. I would say it's more off-white than anything else, right, Brooke? Like an yeah. ivory even. But I think it will definitely look good with everything. Which will look really good with a lot of like the browns and the creams that I already have with the squares. I think that's going to look really yeah. good. And I was thinking like I don't really want a white blanket, but I looked back over the Radvent throw the joining and the joining in between the squares is really thin and the border is not even that thick. So it wouldn't be that much white. And then can we just point out that dad said light gray and I said cream? Um, I think it was the other way around. No, it was not. I said cream. I said cream. I said cream. I Damon, when you I said cream. Did you know Dad watches this? He watched it one time and was like, Oh, I really like that you call you you gave shout outs to your friends that are makers. I was like, Did you watch our podcast? (laughs) So hi dad. (laughs) Hi honey. All right, that's it for finished objects. Next up are whips. So since this is New Year New episode stream for the 2021 i'm gonna go ahead and tell you the one whip that i've cast on in 2021 my new 2021 cast on and then we're gonna go through all of my old whips actually there are a lot but not as many as i thought i thought there were a ton probably because some of them are from like she showed them the basket. 2019, 2018, maybe. That's why I, I feel like... Should we show them the basket? <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, guys, this is not a lot. There's a whole basket filled with prog- project bags. Okay, so um, here's my <laughs> basket. Yeah, guys, there's not a lot. Don't worry oh, about it. Guys. Okay, well, some of them are large. So they're taking oh. up a lot of space. Oh. They're large bags with large projects. Oh. So my 2021 cast on, as I mentioned last time, Desert Vista Dye Works has a monthly sock knit-along club. Um, where basically you have to, we don't have to, you knit a pair of socks from her yarn. Um, you post your before picture and after picture in Ravelry. You can tag on Instagram. Um, and then you, every month you get like a 10% off coupon. I think it so it goes to three months and you get a 30% off coupon. Then every six months, if you keep going, every six months you get a free skinny yarn. So the first six months you get a free skinny yarn of your choice. And if you do it for a full year, so like next December, if I did all this, um, you get a free skein of yarn, but in a specialty colorway that only the sock knit along the members that did it all 12 months get. So you all know mom has to do that. I'm so excited. So actually when I figured out last year that I wanted, it was like last fall that I wanted to participate this year, I went ahead and like stopped knitting her yarn because it, I love her yarn, but it's a dyed to order. So it does take at least six weeks to get your yarn. Um, if not like two months, depends on how many orders she gets. So I totally understand that going into it, love it. Okay with it. But since it does take a little while to get the yarn, I wanted to save up what I had. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I just ordered like three more, but, yep. but I ordered three more on like, for example, I ordered three more skeins of yarn on new year's Eve and I won't get it until, well, she won't ship it till like beginning of February. So that's actually not too bad. She's back down to like four to six weeks. That's which fine. is which is totally cool. Well, you're also knitting this, so yes. So I love it. My January socks, which I'm just knitting in straight vanilla. You can go ahead and show. Well, they're in my my peekaboo bag by Scrappy Angel, as you guys already know. Um, here I already have the first tube done. Brooke, do you want to show just the tube? So that is Daphne Zombody Blake which is um, her Zombody series and obviously the Scooby-Doo line. And we all know that mom looks freakishly like Daphne. I love this color, you guys. I love the Zombody series because it has all these great speckle stripes. I just love it. So here's the yarn with it all rolled up. I like it. That's what's left for my, well, so I'm doing, I did the two because I'm doing an afterthought heel, which I've already placed, obviously. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to cut, have not cut yet. Um, I left these in, so we're going to talk about these during acquisitions. I got these for Christmas. There are these double point needles at Bend. They're amazing. So I haven't Kitchenered that yet, but I will, obviously. Um, I'm also, I usually, I don't say usually, probably about half the time, I usually wait, I usually like to wait, I'll say that, to do the afterthought heel at the end for both tubes. Um, but for this one, the yarn that's next is the bright green stripe. And since I started up here on like this purple into speckles into bright green, um, I don't necessarily have to perfectly match my stripe on my socks, but I do like the tops to be kind of similar. And I'm like, well, it's already on the bright green. I think that would be perfect to put right there anyways. Yeah. So I, like I just figured it was a great spot for us. So I'm actually going to do that first and then cast on to the next one. Some people will like just take off that yarn, just 
cut that yarn until it's ready. Like they'll pull on their skein until they get to the next color they want to do. I don't like, it's not wasting yarn. I don't like not using yarn. <laughs> so I want to do that as least as possible. So this is what I got so far. I just love this tube and I started it on the second and I think I finished this tube on Thursday night during knit night, I finished the toe. So it's actually going pretty fast. Um, there are requirements for the socks you have to make. Like you can't make a bunch of shorty socks. You can't make baby socks. You can't make, you know, and it has to have like a three inch cuff to leg at least, which it still can be kind of short socks, just, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but I love this colorway. It's just so pretty. So here's what I do. I place my stitch markers every 15 rows. You can do 10, I do 15. Now that is just so I'm counting. I don't have to recount because I do my socks by rows. I know I have, I like my leg if I'm doing long socks to be at least 60 rows. So I know once I hit 60, I basically end around whenever the next stripe is and then I continue for foot or I do my heel. I mean, I just kind of gauge it that way. Um, so I place my, I also color coordinate. So this is, especially if I'm doing a um, afterthought heel, um, these are all of my leg colors and I'm, these are all my foot. So I know this is leg, this is foot, so I'm counting. Um, and I also know exactly how many I need for my foot before I start my toe and it's 83. So I know exactly how much it is. Now if I switch yarn, you know, sometimes it's a little bit different gauge, but it's basically about the same for me. Um, I did a 15, just two by two rib, cuff 15 rows, sock net since it's self-striping, it knits itself, and I do a rounded wedge toe. And it's easy peasy, love it. Okay guys, so that was my only 2021 whip cast on. So now we're going to get into my 2020 carryover <laughs> whips. And I'm documenting this here because hopefully by the end of 2021, these will all be finished. Um, she says hopefully. And one of them I think is gonna be frogged at least one of them so i'll all ripped out like i'll tear it oh, out which one i'll show you oh I'll show i don't you. even know <laughs> it's a surprise for everyone so uh first up is my slip stravaganza um it was the 2020 knit along for stephen west i had never done a stephen west pattern or any kind of mystery knit along anyways so this was really great oh i know this mm -hmm. okay now, I actually have done a little bit since we last chatted and I last showed it, um, but not much because I am now at 900, I'm on the border, if you guys all know, I'm sure you guys all heard about this, but when you do the last section and then move to the border, you cast, you, like you double it, like you're at 400 some odd stitches and you increase to over 900. I mean, it's insane. Steven West is a crazy awesome dude. So um, I'm still on the border, I'll be on the border forever, but... Like I even had to go get a longer cable. I went to my local yarn store and was like, give me a 60 inch, I need this. Like this is too squished. So Brooke, do you wanna hold? We're just gonna give you like a rough tour since it is still bunched on a 60 inch cable, just so you know. So this was section one right here. This was the bonus section, section two, no, bonus section 1.5, I don't know whatever it was. Then this was the next section right here. And then I go to this section with this little triangles and now we're on the border, which are making these chevron points and the border will be pointed. It's really great. Oh my gosh. Brooke, I love it. It's getting so oh, close oh, to the edge. I thought you got mad at me for something. <gasps> yeah, I would have been mad if that came off. Okay. Oh, you yeah. were mad at me. <laughs> okay, hold this. Oh. So we're just gonna do like a span across. So this is just how big, I mean, and this is pre-blocking. Once I block, this stuff out imagine how big that's gonna be it's gonna be amazing i just love it it's so exciting um i have this project note in my or project linked in my ravelry um, most of this is shalimar yarns all from stash i think there's one uh malabrigo i think that the turquoisey color is malabrigo but the rest is all shalimar yarns check out my ravelry page if you want to look into that more Okay, next up are my Christmas socks that I just never finished because I'm designing something. Like, my goal this year, which I wrote down in my new bullet journal that I got for Christmas, um, is to actually release my first design. And I actually said I wouldn't release two this year, which doesn't seem like a lot for you awesome designers. But when you're first starting out, I feel like that's a good goal for me to like. But wait until you see the one that she's designing. I'm actually in love with this. What is it called? Hidden Forest? <laughs> I have toy with the name but we we kind of like hidden forest i like hidden forest because hidden forest if you socks. look at it okay so i'm gonna talk about these socks <laughs> so 
as you can see, if you look really closely, um, there are like these trees, right? And you know, they're hidden, you know, <laughs> hidden for us, like, you know, to put the pieces together. They're like, it's um, kind of like very subtle, which I really like. And it works really good for a super speckly yarn. And you can kind of see it like that, so it's probably better. But um, and, this is on, should I quickly mention the yarn before I forget? Ridiculous Yarns. Um, this is her mini that comes with it. Um, and it's in the Winter Cottage colorway. And she, we're calling it Hidden Forest because um, we want it to be like a year round thing that you can make. So originally like these are, were intended to be Christmas trees, but then like now we're just like, okay, Hidden Forest, so they can literally be any trees. Like, right, you know. so I'm making them for my Christmas socks, but you can make them for, they don't no, have to be Christmas socks because they're cute little trees. Basically what happened is I'm not quite sure I like the placement of one of the trees next to the heel. And so that's where I stopped. And also I was going to name my Radvent throw and then all the, the Christmas um, gifts I was making. But I'm knitting it cuffed down. I use size always. If I'm knitting socks for myself, it's size US size 1, 2.25 millimeter um, needles. Um, I know Magic Loop. I just learned two at a time Magic Loop. Um, but if I'm knitting something that's self-striping or if I'm designing, now that I know, I know how to do this, I knit it on my nine inch circulars. Um, if I'm doing a pattern, I like to do two at a time toe up because I get second sock syndrome, as you'll see from my whips, when it comes to pattern, because pattern socks take longer. And by the time I finally finish that one, I'm like, oh, I don't wanna start another one. I wanna do something else. I want something, like just something completely different. And so I get the second sock syndrome with the pattern. So I feel like when I knit a pattern sock, I will definitely do two at a time uh, magic loop. I think that's what I'll, I'll yeah. just do. But I love I love these socks and I'm really excited about them. So stay tuned for for that. I mean, hey, we can always do like a giveaway and they can get that pattern for free as well. I mean, even, you're ahead of yourself. I haven't even like written a pattern, test knit. I'm just saying, like, in the future, it could happen. <laughs> yes. So next up are my I call them my possum socks because it's uh, the yarn is got has got possum in it my husband brought it back from australia super soft and cozy i'll talk more about that later these are actually the library socks brooke do you want to hold these up these are the library socks by the kitchen sink shop i believe it's a free pattern i still have the texture on it um they're actually made to be like a long sock and i made them short socks because i love short socks i just mm -hmm. and i made it have a little bit of a leg um but i love short socks anyways no matter if it's winter time or summertime. Um, and plus they're faster, you know. The yarn is, it comes in 50 gram balls, so I have two of them. Um, it is 55% New Zealand Merino, 20% nylon, 15% alpaca, and 10% possum. I mean, how cool is that? Possum? I would never have thought. My husband found this in a yarn shop in Australia when he was there for work last year. And they are so soft and luxurious. And so I figured, hey, it's so cool and different. And I love it because it almost looks like a purple camo yeah. kind of printy. And I wasn't sure. Like, you know when you get the yarn. So here's the original yarn. Or do you want to hold that up? Um, it looks almost like it could be stripey. I wasn't sure. So when you get skeins like this, I'm like, well, it could be stripey. It could be patterny. I had no idea. So I picked a pattern that I knew like, the library sock texture would go with any of them. And it actually turns out to be neater. It's like a marled camouflage -y. It's really pretty. I love it. So now, second sock syndrome, I have to make the <laughs> other one, but I will. Okay, next up is my Breathe and Hope Shawl by Casapinka. This was the local yarn store day um, like kit that you could get from, so if you got, if you bought the yarn from your yarn store, Casapinka gives you the pattern for free. It's really great. This was a 2020 version. I wanted something very, it was 2020 and it was spring and yeah. it was, we just hit it and everybody was having a rough time. So I wanted something very bright and cheerful and this is like, and that's, that's exactly right what she got. Right is exactly what I got. It so. is so nice. You want to show that up, Brooke? I'm showing it all. Ooh. This is how much I got done so far. So pretty. It's actually a lot more lighter than it shows on the camera. It's definitely a lot more, like a line. Like it's a lot more vibrant. Neon. <laughs> it's very neon. So here are the two oh, oh so <laughs> nice so here's the first one this is the lighter color of pops of neon and here is the like super it's not it's very very bright in person like like neon neon bright um 
<laughs> Sorry, we've been watching Bridgerton. Yeah. Oh, we'll get to that. Bridgerton. <laughs> so the green highlighter green is Kelborn Woolens Perennial. And what color is that, Brooke? It is um, neon lime. Is it neon lime? So that's good. Neon lime. I mean, that's pretty accurate. You know, <laughs> back here it looks like it is, right? Mm-hmm. This is like a neon lime. It's exactly what it is. Exactly. And what kind of yarn is that, Brooke? Um, it is sixty percent superwash mer- merino, twenty five percent surrey alpaca, fifteen percent nylon, and that's it. That's it. <laughs> it's awesome. I saw more, but it was like right. the length. And then this white with the speckles, like the neon pops of color, is by Wonderland Yarns, it's, and it's the Mary Ann um, yarn. And what's the color, Brooke? Um, the color is Mary Ann Opal. Yep, it's a year. It's her a year in color series, and it's opal, which is Brooke's birthstone. It is a birthstone. <laughs> you know. I thought that was really cool. All right, there it is. Pigments of imagination. And Brooke, why don't you read off what's in that yarn? Eighty-five <laughs> percent fine merino wool and fifteen percent nylon. All right, you ready? Oh my god! Sunset Highway. <laughs> There's nothing else. Okay. There's, there's a couple on the back. <laughs> so, Brooke, this is the first time she saw my show notes, and she's like, you're going to go through all your whips? I'm like, yeah, it'll be okay. It's not as much as we thought. Yeah, no, she's like, she's like, there's a few on the front. And like, so it's like, we have like I our, just turned over. like a notebook. So like we, so this is like the whips. And then she's like, oh, and there's a couple on the back. Yeah, there's a couple on and the I back. And I just flipped it over. <laughs> she got to see the whips. <laughs> okay. So... You guys have already seen this one. It is my Sunset Highway. I love it. It's just been pushed. I, okay, this is what I love knitting. I love casting on your projects, mm-hmm. and I love having projects. When you're, when you knit multiple items, there's not a lot. There's a lot of times where you don't have finished objects. So like you go a long period of time. That's why the socks are nice because you get them done pretty quick. Um, but then when you do finish projects, I feel like I I finish them all at once. Like I'll finish three or four in like a week. Like just, they all kind of culminate at the same time. So it's like, look at all these finished objects. (laughs) But like, you don't see in the background where I've actually been knitting on them for like two years apparently. (laughs) This one is a 2020 cast on. I was using all stash. I thought I was so proud of myself for using all stash Mm -hmm. yarn during the 2020. It was when we had our first like shutdown, like everything went to quarantine Yeah, and you couldn't buy yarn. I was so proud of myself that as soon as the stars, the stores opened up, I uh, tripled the amount of yarn I used in my sweater and bought more. That's just how it is. So, what I have here, let me make sure I'm showing you guys the front. Here is the front of my Sunset Highway. Here's one sleeve. I helped Caitlin with the sleeve. Caitlin Hunter. So, oh my gosh, you guys, look at this. It's so pretty. Can you see? Oh yes, the speckles. I have like on a holder right now. I helped with the uh, sleeves. Because it was like the yarn. So I'm doing the cuff for my right. Oh, yeah, this one. Like I'm doing my cuff, and they're super long. So I'm, I just got to double this. Like, the cuffs are really long, which I love. I love. And some people shorten their cuffs if they don't need a long cuff. Um, I want to keep that, make, maybe even make them longer. I love long cuffs. I'm tall. We're tall. So are it's we? nice when things make us feel not tall. Are we tall? So when things fit us super big. I don't think we're tall. We're pretty tall. Oh. Brooke's taller than me. You can't tell by the way she's sitting. Should I stand up straight? Yeah, you want to sit up straight? Yeah. <laughs> I am sitting up straight. So I told her to like go medium. <laughs> go like, there you go. <laughs> sit right there the whole time. <laughs> so uh, for this, I'm actually doing a couple different um alterations to the yarn request because i was using stash so we can do that knitters we can change whatever we want as long as we love it um all the yarn is in my link to my ravelry page for the project page so go ahead and check that out because i don't remember i love them all like all of my favorite like yarns just go check them out um i only have two skeins of the main color so i knew that i was going to have to adapt something um, so once I ran out of the first skein, I stopped because I knew I wanted to make sure I had my sleeves done. Um, there's not that much in each of the main color. This is all to pattern. This is the cuff. The cuff is supposed to be done in the main color. Okay. Um, I switched it because I knew I wanted to save yarn wherever I could. Um, so I just changed it to the green that I loved. I love the green. And mm-hmm. I figure out green on the cuff would be great. It was my idea. Yes. So I... Went ahead and did that, so I'm just finishing that. I'll do that on the other side as well. Whatever I have left of the main color, I'm going to come down and I'm going to finish it right here. So it's going to be, and then and then when I get down to like the 
the ribbing on the bottom. If I have to switch to one of the other colors, I will. And if I have enough, I'll just finish it with the mint color. So we'll just kind of go from there if and see how it goes. I would go with, I would go with probably with the purple at the bottom. Yeah, but the purple, of course, is what I've used the most, I think. Really? Yeah, I think so. I mean, there's a lot of purple, but yeah. I feel like this is more like chunks. Yeah, but what you can't see on Color Work Brooke is that I'm carrying the purple behind it. Mm -hmm. So uh, it doesn't look like I'm using it. I'm carrying it this whole time. So I'm it's almost like I knit that with purple. Mm. But I love it. It's so squishy. So. Okay, next up is my... Can we just talk about how many progress bags my, mom's ha my mom has? Project bags? Project bags. Um, do you want to see the bucket of empty project bags? <laughs> it's another bucket that looks like the same. Okay, let's not do that. <laughs> I just love knitting stuff. What do you want to do? I actually love the project bags. Okay. So this is my Find Your Fade. I'm actually, I would say, close to being done with this. This I see is what happens. I'm gonna get super close and finish everything all at once. I only have two more colors to add in. I haven't seen this one. I, this is my Find Your Fade. So this is another 2020 cast on during quarantine. Which side is the right side? This side. Uh, nope, this side. Uh, okay, so let's start from the bottom. This is really pretty. I know, so I it fades. So goes to black. And to purple. To purple. To purple and, speckles. And then to, to gray, lavender. Let's say then lavender. Gray speckled into a lighter gray speckled. So it is just really it looks like fun. you're almost done with this. I know. It's so great. So I used like a 20 gram mini. Like I first, the first yarns I got, I feel like I needed more different fading. So I wanted to start darker. So I used like a 20 gram mini skein that I had already have like this black charcoal color and then I went into this which I love how I did that and then I've added in another like a lighter color as well I, don't, I haven't gotten there yet but it's gonna be big and beautiful and amazing once it's done it's very easy simple knitting it's got garter with some lace panels easy lace panels um so I'm gonna definitely finish that here pretty soon because I want to wear it mm -hmm. I mean I don't know where I'm gonna wear it too Around the house, duh, or for the podcast. Around the house, I'll wear it on the podcast. <laughs> My ghost socks. So, I adapted a pattern. It's So, the pattern I got this from was mainly for the chart. She does have um, kind of basic instructions for how to do the toe and I think the heel. But it's basically for people who already know how to knit a sock. And it's free. So, I got it because I liked the chart for the ghost patterns. Brooke, do you want to hold up the... And I don't know if you can tell, but the, the gray is like a sparkly color. This is all stash yarn that I had. Um, I made a little mistake, which you can probably see right there. See? That's and mistake. it's a toe up chart pattern. So I had to reverse it. So I was doing cuff down and then I reversed it where I didn't. Anyways, I mess up. Um, I do like them. But I did mess up and I was like, well, and then I kind of changed my mind on how I want to do this. These are gonna be short socks if you can't tell. I already marked my afterthought heel. Um, but then I'm like, do I even want to do an afterthought heel with this? And so I'm probably gonna frog these. So just rip these out. I definitely want to do something at least like this or similar. I think the ghosts are super cute. Um, this is the one that she was talking about ripping out. Yes, so the ghost socks are by Valerie Wibbins. And it's actually the Happy Haunts socks. which I think that's a cute little name. I like that. Happy that's Haunts. Cute. Well, because the ghosts are really cute. Yes, by Valerie Valerie Wibbins, and I believe it's still free, but it's a great chart pattern. I just messed it up, but <laughs> they're really cute. Okay, guys. This is my whip that has been a whip the longest, oh and my it's gosh. the saddest. I, I have not seen this bag. I know. I love so, this tote Wait, is this bag. the one that's been in timeout? No. That oh one is not even a whip because I it's not even started anymore. <laughs> I tore it out. Like There's one in timeout. Yeah. That was, yeah. For like it's in time how long? Like five years? It's still years? in yarn. It's back sentence? in the yarn form after like five years three times or four. Anyways. So this is my French press cardi. It's a crochet cardigan by TL Yarn Crafts. I even got Montana Crochet Yarn, which she's amazing. You guys should all check it out. It's like a Tweety here at Brooke. Show the yarn. Oh my gosh. It's like Tweety bits in there. It is amazing. So... While I crochet, I'm a crochet, I, I don't call myself a crocheter, I can crochet. Like, I'm a knitter with a capital K, I'm probably a crocheter with like a lower KC. Is that a thing? <laughs> so, uh, for this cardigan, it's definitely constructed in a way for a garment, and there's a lot of different like, moving around and picking up other places, and really beautiful stitches, and 
luckily I did the crochet along. I mean, I didn't obviously participate, but I signed up for it. And so I have all the videos because she did great videos on how to like teach us how to do things. Um, but since I'm not a crocheter with a capital C, I'm a lower case C, <laughs> I have to kind of focus. I can bust out a hat or whatever or crochet, no problem. It's when it's coming to this, I have to really focus and pay attention while I'm doing it. And I just haven't been at a point, a point in my time where I can just like sit down and have to really focus on something that I'm crocheting because I just, I just don't feel like it's just too much, too much. So this is what I have so far. I believe it's like what this. What is it? It's going to be a cardigan. This is like, I think this is the- I thought it was gonna be a blanket. I think this is a sleeve actually. No. It gave me blanket vibes. I don't know. I don't actually know. This is the first part. So you guys- I like the yarn though. I know. First of all, it's really cute. It's like a cropped three quarter sleeve mm. cropped cardigan. Oh, oh my gosh. Cute. It's so cute. Um, it's gonna be really great to finally get this done. But this is all I have done. This is not, I mean, this is pitiful. I really need to get this done. I have really expensive, beautiful hand dyed yarn. That I need to use so I can wear. I mean, it's just gonna happen. All right, now we're on the bits and bobs, which is this one, right? Okay, yep. Oh, I'm so. I was right. <gasps> yes, Brooke yes. I, I I saw the bits and bobs in the sheet. And I was like, oh, it's that one. Yep. I'm just Next so smart. Next up, which you guys have seen if you watched our first couple, maybe our first one. I think is the only time I mentioned it. I think we it. mentioned it the first time, yeah. My bits and bobs blankets. So this one is like my scrappy blanket so Brooke I think we can just like start Don't here we go poke my eye oh, out no. <gasps> all right so it starts from up Wee. here goes down here I got a lot done I'm using all of my scrappy bits um this is the bits and bobs by Kay Jones it's a modified fisherman's rib um it's so squishy amazing you hold two together so you have one main skein in the background and then you add in your scraps and hold that double, which is why you get this fade. I'm doing it, mine, so mine are more drastic. I don't care, it's like my scrappy, cozy afghan for me. Um, what I did instead of getting, so I was trying to use stash, instead of going to buy like a whole bunch of white skeins or light colored skeins, which I think I'm gonna do for my next one, because mm -hmm. I want it to be very watercolory. Um, I just use random skeins I have that I would like to, and I don't mind is just putting in a blanket. Um, so they're all different color skeins. And I think it takes about four or five uh, main skeins in the background. So obviously you can see how my first skein was like a greenish color. My next one was like a yellowy color. And then this one is a dark, like this color. So you can see that, but it's being held with other colors. So it kind of comes out very interesting. I just love it. It's very squishy. And you can adapt this for like all yarn weights, I feel like. So this one is not necessarily something I'm like pressing myself to do because it's like a scrappy one. So mm -hmm. as I go, I add to it. And it's also know. a blanket, so you're not gonna wear it. Like she likes making stuff to wear, but mm -hmm. of course I love blankets, yeah. as I've discussed before. <laughs> All right, since I already have this out, the next one are my is my blanket of calm. It's the last one, guys. Um, this is a blanket of calm, and <laughs> this is also, <laughs> so this is gonna take forever. Look how tiny these, these squares are, Brooke. All right, guys, it's like my palm, not even my palm. This is so tiny. I mean, I have not blocked these. This is crochet. These are really cute yarn. They're though. so cute. Tiny. This is actually my advent. So what I did was, um, I'm gonna show you guys. Oh. My radvent squares take up, it's a 20 gram mini, and I have about four grams left over right here. I weighed these and I know that each of these squares is only three grams. Ooh. So if I came across the color of my advent that I wanted to make a square out of, I did and then I had one gram left over. So what I've done with my one grams left over of each one, I've only done like four or five of them. Um, I've added it to a magic knot ball. So I've magic knotted them together and I'm making a ball of, ma of my scrappy pieces of one grams and then I'll make basically like scrappy socks or something. Oh, that's cool. I know. So this is all I've got so far. Um, if I had, like if I did five, I had like what, five grams here. So it's really small, but I'll just keep adding to it and then I'll make choppy socks eventually. Like not with just these advents, I won't have enough, but it'll eventually uh, make, it's really cute. So I thought it was really great use of, cause I don't like getting, these yarn is expensive y'all. <laughs> so we don't want to get rid of any yarn or waste it. So we just use it all up. So back to the squares, the tiny this things. is going to take quite a bit Dude, and oh, you could use these for teacups 
you and I've seen people they actually will make these and make them into like a mug rug where it's oh, like a coaster yeah. like, they'll put four together you know what I'm saying that would be cute um, what I was going to do with these is I'm only using like my prettiest colors and kind of keeping on a color scheme a little bit, just like mm -hmm. light, not, not too bold, not too dark, you know, just kind of like a light color sequence. And I'm making like a nice kind of a lap, like a smaller blanket. Cause this would take forever. Next up are acquisitions. Yay. Done with the whips. Woo. Done with the whips. <laughs> so you won't, I'm not going to show them every time we have a podcast. I only mm -hmm. show them as I'm working on them, but I figure it's the new year. I, and to keep myself accountable, you guys all, and if you guys want to like add in comments, like, um, are you done with this yet? I can be like, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm still working on it. But you guys can keep me accountable. Okay, first of all, I am a cast on a holic and I, cause, because you knit what makes you happy. And if you want to cast on something and that makes you mm -hmm. happy, you do it. This, you, there's no one in control of your own knitting, but you. Honestly, do what you like, do whatever makes you care if you finish it. Like, of course, like finishing it is like a goal, but like if it, if it's fun, just do it. Yeah. I'm obviously because we're talking about this at midnight, like last month. It was I am a process knitter rather than a pro. I think it's product knitter. I think that's the other one. Like Basically, the I like the process of knitting and ca I love casting on. It's I love something seeing how yarn is gonna knit up and seeing how my project is like being created right before me I love that part and getting the project bag together I just love all that stuff um and the end product is cool I love having the end product but my I feel like my goal is not the end yeah goal. that makes sense I like it but I like doing it so that's that's why I, I do so many and I cast on so many and then when I'm done I'm like yeah that's cool I'm done I don't know like when I'm reading I like just like I want to finish it as fast as possible like I know mm. friends who like just reading the book and they don't want it to end I just want to end it because I'm just like because like then I feel like an accomplishment that you just read a book you know what I mean like you're smart and you just did something with your life <laughs> right. which is knitters that's what we do yeah exactly so acquisitions my first acquisitions oh my gosh is my 52 weeks of socks look I haven't even taken off this little front cardboardy thing because it's just so pretty I mean, I'll, I'll show you guys a little peek. 52 <laughs> weeks of socks, you guys. Okay, first of all, when I heard about how much this costs, I was like, um, that's a lot. But then I'm like, wait a minute, that's 52 sock patterns? Wow. So it's really a bargain when you think about that. And the sock patterns are gorgeous. I've already gone through. And the book itself is so beautiful. Okay, next up, Christmas gifts. So I got this 750 knitting stitches. I checked this out from our library pre-COVID and I loved it. It's like one of my favorite ones. I don't know why it's one of my favorite ones. I think it's because I like, without showing the pictures, like how big of a sample they put mm -hmm. on there. I do like that. Um, and that's actually how these great stitch patterns are great for when you're designing or if you want to modify or yeah. add something on something plain. Um, it's really great. So I love this one. Um, and we can all, you want to start doing yours, Brooke? Okay, guys. So I also got for Christmas, which it, Brooke, might as well have been for her, is what, Brooke? Turn it around. is the Harry Potter <laughs> Knitting Thing by Tannis Gray. Okay, guys, this is the Brooke talk, okay? Brooke is so excited about this book. So I think it I'm was gonna... more of a gift for her. I mean, I love it. Well, I'm very when excited. When dad, uh, dad looked at me and he was like, it's from me, not from you. And then I was like, fine. <laughs> Do you want to show them what you got for me? Are you wearing it? My necklace? Yeah, I got mom this necklace. The big circles her and I'm the little circle. So I actually bookmarked everything I wanted. So as you can see, there's a lot of bookmarks. Christmas day night that was already bookmarked. <laughs> I was like, okay, uh, just so you know, I won't be knitting that right now. Like right the second I've got like other things. So the green is the clothes, like the um, items I would wear. And then like this is like kind of like. Um, <laughs> she even color cor Oh, sorry. I just shut it. It's fine. Uh, she even color, color coordinated, coordinated her Okay, flags. so this is the Brook Talk. Welcome. This is my YouTube channel now. <laughs> I wanted this one, yet I don't know if I want it to be my initial or if I want it. So I, I have a little crush on um, the Weasley twins. Um, you know the redheads, you know the cute ones. Um, I mean, redheads. Yeah. Um, so I, I either want it to be like an F for Fred Weasley, or of course I would like it to be a B, but like at the same time. That's why I assumed that she wanted to be yeah. for Brooke, and I was just like, pump. No. And she's like, I don't know. I was like, I mean, do you not want it to be your sweater? These are actually like the um like the houses um scarves and we actually already bought the yarn for it. We already bought the yarn, so we went so to So I'm actually a Hufflepuff, believe it or not. <laughs> I know I'm sassy. Um it was very shocking to everyone. But I am a Hufflepuff. <laughs> so we got these yarn, which is actually I picked them out because I'm just so amazing. Um 
And here's the yellow. We got these all at um, Joann's that I went to. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and this is like a kind of like a yellow gold. And then we have, you know, just the basic black, you know, basic. These are um, golden snitches or like Quidditch gloves and socks. And, you know, I want both of them. So <laughs> I know. I was like, which one did you want? She's like, both. I'm like, oh. Okay. And mom's like, okay, I, I should have not asked. <laughs> and these are Expecto Patrona mittens, if you guys know. Expecto Patrona. Um, <laughs> it's a Patronus. It's really nice. I wanted Hermione's Time Turner sweater, which is, you know, really pretty. She's also really pretty. You know, like Hermione or the girl. No, the, the, oh, both she's of them. really pretty too. I know. And then I wanted Luna Lovegood's um, spec, spectra specs, spe- <laughs> gloves. Spectra specs. All right, and then we have two more. Because these ones are actually not closed. They're actually, like, cute little things to have. Delightful decor is what she's calling them. Of course, I want the Hogwarts house mug cozies. Especially Hufflepuff, because I'm a Hufflepuff, as I said. So, as you guys probably may know, you do not like making stuffed animals. I don't know what it... Okay, out of all things to knit and crochet, stuffed animals or any kind of creatures are my least favorite. And I think I figured out why. It's all the piecing together. It's making small things and then seaming them all together. I just, it's not joyful for me. <laughs> I don't but, like it. I don't know but, why. Anything else. But, you know, I also don't like making giant sweaters and piecing them together either. Mm-hmm. So I don't like seaming. I think that's what it is. I don't like, I mean, I'll do a little bit of seaming, no problem. But when I have to do a whole bunch, I don't like it. It's not fun. But I have convinced my dear mother <laughs> to try this. It's a little pixie. Because it, honestly, it's so cute. I think mm-hmm. I would mm-hmm. definitely mm-hmm. try that. All right, guys, and that is the Harry Potter <laughs> knitting book. All right, next up, what I got for Christmas are these flexi flips that I was really excited to try, which I use for my toe. It comes with three. I've actually used one already to put in for my afterthought heel, but there's three flexi flips, and they, they're like double point needles, and they bend in the middle. Um, to me, when I was using them, it's almost like it's really close to magic loop, kind of. Because I'm using one, you know, the other one bends. It, it felt like Magic Loop. Even though you kind of got three going on, it just felt like that. Um, but I got them in my standard US one and then one and a half. Because I use both of those mainly for socks. Like I'll go up to one and a half for like my husband's socks or your yeah. socks sometimes. But I usually use one. So I got those just to try out. And I actually really like them. So it also it has one side is sharper than the other. Um, so I just always picked out the sharper side to do mine, but there is a more blunt side. Mm-hmm. So it just depends on what you like to do. And then Brooke got me some pom-pom makers. This is for, I think a small one. Yeah, extra small. So these are gonna be like oh. nice little tiny pom-poms, which are great, because you know what? I wanna make a pom-pom garland. Have you seen those before? No. It's like our fairy lights, but they're pom-poms, like different oh, colors. That's so Isn't that cute? cute? I wanna make one of those. And also, one of my um, dream knittings is the hat vent by Jody Brown uh-huh. and it's like a garland of like little mini stocking hats with like oh, pom-poms and you hang them on this little garland and it's like a Christmas kind I like of that. Um, decoration so this will be perfect for that and then I almost had no yarn to show what Shocking. if you've seen like my first three episodes I mean it's a little embarrassing how much yarn I get I don't know if it, she's I kept doing thinking, better she's doing better I feel like it was you know so but today so Brooke got her haircut if you can't tell um, and it's right above our, her, the hair stylist is like two floors above our favorite local yarn store. Yay. So I went, I'm like, I guess if you're getting your hair cut, cause you can't really stay there because, you know, COVID. But um, I was like, I guess I'll have to go downstairs to the, just, you know. I guess. She has to. Shucks. So I got this. Brooke, do you want to hold it up? It's Dream in Color. Um, so pretty. Um, what color is it, Brooke? It's on their it Bobby BFL base. Mer- Mercond- Mercado lights? Mercado. Mercado, Mercado lights. lights. And I got this because my son's college colors are red <gasps> oh, and gold. Oh, yes, yes. And mm-hmm. with like the white is their off color, so it's like kind of close. So I figured these would be like great socks and I can make these into my, mm-hmm. you know, my son's college socks. That'd be really cute. Very smart. For very myself. Smart. Not for you. And mm-hmm. then I can't just leave with like one skein of yarn, right? Oh, that's weird. So I was looking through, I always love these cute, sassy, um, like, uh, cross-stitch kits. 
I cross stitch way back in the day and honestly I have too many hobbies and not enough time so it says hot mess isn't that and it comes with everything which is why I liked it it comes with the the ring and everything and all the colors and the pattern and next time you see this it will probably be hanging up in I, our notorious background i got it for our new background you guys like our new setup so we got like a little background going on and a new, a new space a new room in the house we're still working on i'm still learning about lighting and where to put things in shadows so just kind of you know we'll get better at it but isn't this cute so cute so these are what i got today I'm actually feeling like this is pretty good coming out of the yarn store with. Like, I know. I was actually really proud. Impressed. I was like, oh, I thought she was going to come out with like a bag of yarn like she usually does. Well, and I did see a couple colors I really liked, but I was envisioning larger projects. I would need mm -hmm. more than one skein of yarn, and I didn't know what I was making. So I don't like to buy a large number of skeins unless I know what, what I'll be make. using it for. Yeah. I knew this would be socks. Mm -hmm. One skein. Perfect. So that's what I got them for. All right. Next up our subscriptions i've got my row one yarn subscription here um i should my yarnable one is on its way it's been on its way since like the first and it's just not yarnable's fault not cheryl's fault but and not the postal worker's fault it's just there's a lot it's of Maryland's things fault. it's a lot of things going on and it's just it's been in, in transit from new hampshire since like the second i mean i don't know how long it takes to get from new hampshire to virginia but I wouldn't envision this many days. I'm assuming it's basically in a distribution center, like with a ton of other boxes. So we'll get to it whenever, no big deal. But I did get my row one yarn club. So Brooke, without too much crinkling, you wanna try and show them? So this is how it comes. The row one yarn club is a mini set club. You get 10, 10 gram minis. So basically equal, equaling one skein of sock yarn. The best thing is, and it comes with this little kit over here. When you open it, each month is from a different dyer. So you get to have a nice little highlight of in a little taste of yarn from a brand new indie dyer each month, which I love because there are so many indie dyers that I see online that I don't necessarily, you know, I've never seen their yarn before, but I want to order, but then, you know, it's a lot of money. And so this way you get to kind of taste it all and get to see if you like them. I really like, so that then it comes with this little paper it tells you all about it this month was 29 bridges studio which i was really excited about um, because i've always i've heard about this brass tax color and she actually included it which i was really excited about um it also comes with little treats so this month came with stash green tea and then also a little biscuit which i really like and then it also came with a stitch marker that i already took out of here because <laughs> it was so exciting it's a little 2021 metal charm stitch marker i'll put a picture in here if you want to see it but it's really great to see all these and when i do with these i use them for heel toes and cuffs on my socks i'll throw them into my scrappy um, blankets or any because all the time you need especially in color work you might only need a little bit of yarn like for example my find your fade cow i used a 20 gram mini and still has some left over so i probably could use a 10 gram just for the beginning so you never know when you only need a little bit of yarn mm -hmm. so you can always use those First up on dream knitting section, um, I already mentioned it before. It is the Hat Vent by Jody Brown. I believe she just released that in 2020. Um, we're looking at it now. It, it comes with the i cord um, kind of garland hanging like instructions with like these tassels on the end. It's really pretty, um, with a whole bunch of different little mini hats, and they look so cute. I, I love them. Look. They look really cute. My next two, which I only have two more on my dream knitting, are both in Tarja, and that's one of my goals for knitting for this year is to learn in Tarja. First up, my number one that I really want to do is the Mixtape Tea by Jesse Ostermiller. I mean, look at this, Brooke. It, it is, is so pretty. It is so cool. It's a tee, like a, like a short sweater tee, and it's got a cassette tape in Tarja right here. I love it so cool you guys have to check it out like right now i like, go look at it the next uh intarsia dream knitting item i want to make on my dream knitting list is the professor meow sweater i love it it's so cute you guys okay so I, you can see it on ravelry but it is a knit pick it's a pattern you can get through knit picks it is by claire slade but you can buy it through the knit picks website i saw it on one of their like updates or newsletters they sent us um and I just love it. It's a giant, like, cat, shadow cat looking right here, but you, like, embroider the whiskers on afterwards, and 
I just really like it. And I want everyone to refer to that sweater when I wear it as Professor Meow. I will. Like, hi, I'm Kim. This is Professor Meow. Like, I, I feel like that's what, it's like a whole, it's so cool. Everyone, go check it out right now. You can find it on Knit Picks, like I said, and also on Ravelry, just to look at. But if you want to buy it, you have to buy it through Knit Picks. And another good thing about that Professor Meow sweater is it's bulky yarn. You guys, and it's like short sleeve, bulky yarn. It's using their Wonder Fluff base on Knit Picks. How fast is that going to be to make? Like, I maybe that should be my first one. Like, when I, I learn Intarsia, that, that could be my first one because it's bulky, so it'll get done faster, mm -hmm. and I'll be able to see the yarn better. I feel like that'll just make it all easier. All right, next up, our podcast. Um, the Vlogmases I loved. I, like, I love them all, but the ones I really were drawn to and the one that posted just consistently that I really liked all their content... First up was the Crazy Talk Lady, of course. She posted really good ones. I loved all of her advents. She had so many, and she was knitting on all those projects. She turned her advents into actual projects all through that month. There were some, like uh, maybe like one she didn't quite get to, but oh my gosh. Like I, cool. I thought, I felt pretty like full with just doing one advent. I don't even know about like three or four. I can't remember how many she had, but it was a lot. But it was really, it was really fun. Um, the next one is Happy Knits. I love that. She would do little clips. Um, she like put multiple days together. She didn't have a lot of content. It was great. I loved it. I made the French toast that she has in like her early on vlog. It was good. I made it for us and it was so good. It, it was, was good. quite tasty. I loved it. Um, and the last one was By the Lakeside. It's Sandy By the Lakeside's podcast, which is By the Lakeside. Her, first of all, her voice is so calming. Um... And she makes has all these great recipes, and I also like love her nail polish that she has. She had this great nail polish that I wanted, and lip gloss. She gives us all these little tips about that, like tells us all about all her brands. And um, I think the crazy sock lady actually has the same nail polish. So I was like, ooh, mm -hmm. I should like look at that too. So lots of great content for those three. Um, check them out if you want to. All right, Brooke, what have you? Because I know I haven't been reading, so I've been knitting. So I've actually been reading a little bit. Um, I actually just started, um, this book called Crave by Tracy Wolf, I believe. Um, it's basically, it's a new vampire series that definitely gives me Twilight vibes along with, if you guys have read the Fallen series, like the Angel series, um, it definitely gives, like, it's like a mix of Twilight with a little bit of, like, the Fallen concept. Um, it takes place in Alaska and it's about this girl. I figured out her name. Grace, that's the main character. Grace. Next up, uh, what are we watching? Oh my gosh. Oh Should my we? goodness. Okay, wow. Okay, well, okay, December, Christmas movies, great stuff. Okay, now we're Flash moving on. Flash forward <laughs> to 2021, when I finally, because, so I knew, we, we saw Bridgerton was going to come out. On Christmas. On Christmas. We knew it was coming out, but like my, my mom was here, and we had family, and so we knew as soon as like she left, we would watch it. So like that weekend. We literally watched it like the next day. We binged left. it in like 24 hours. We did. It was, and they're like full hour episodes. Mm -hmm. There's nine of them. It was so good. I was actually at my hair salon, and I was like talking about. I, was like, I recommend this. It is a Regency era drama, um, and so like Pride and Prejudice type thing, but it's got okay. Gossip Girl. So if you've it's, seen Gossip Girl, it's definitely like a Gossip Girl type thing. Gossip Girl meets Downton Abbey mm -hmm. is what everyone says, and it's accurate. And it's actually uh, made by the person who made Grey's Anatomy and Scandal. We watched it now, so. Parents of teenagers, if you're gonna watch us with your teenager, <laughs> uh, Brooke is a teenager. She's in high school. I'm she can 15. watch. She, she can watch these things. However, if you're gonna watch it with them, there's gonna be some awkwardness. I knew from Instagram, so I didn't want to get too like too much um, like spoilers. So I didn't really know too much about it. But I knew there was one scene that was very you know sexy. Which is, that's like a very vague word to say. So I knew there was a, they were going to show a lot. I knew that. I knew there was one scene in particular. So I figured it would be the wedding night, which it was. <laughs> it, oh, yeah, it was the wedding it night. Was the it wedding was the wedding night. But night. what I didn't know, and I knew, and I already prepped, so I talked to my like, hey, Brooke, <laughs> you know, you're, we're going to watch this together. Just, we're going to watch this Just together. be aware. It might be a little awkward. It's okay. We're going to watch it. It's going to be fine. And it was fine. It was great. And I didn't realize, though, that it, like, it's, like, the rest of that episode and then the whole next episode and then like periods after an episode so there's a lot of sexy time um let's just call it no, that no i was just but relying it's, it's on it's really great so but then it was like i was relying on the orchestra to make me not feel so awkward but then the orchestra stopped for a second i was like no no bring it back bring the orchestra oh, and back. what's really great too is when they have like their big balls and they have the orchestra playing in the background oh, it's yeah. modern music yeah so there's um 
Seven Rings by Ariana Grande. That's in there. Um, There's Nothing Holding Me Back by Shawn Mendes. I, I actually so saw you can like hear it. You're like, wait, I know this song. I was like jamming out. So I was like, cool, you guys. You have to watch Bridgerton. It's so fun. Um, and it left so much unsaid. So there's obviously, hopefully, mm-hmm. season two. And apparently, there are books. And I did find out that each book is each is one of the siblings. Piece. Oh, wait, which sibling? Oh, so, so she was first. Okay, so and I think it goes to the oldest brother after her. Anthony? I think it goes to Anthony. I don't Ooh, I don't know the exact order, but dude, Anthony. So it goes through all of the Bridgerton siblings like as they're siblings. the first person and I don't know what they're about, but there's a book series and apparently it's That's amazing good. and just so you have to check it out. So that actually segued us into Downton Abbey because I watched a long time ago the first season and I think I was like I side note, my background, I went back to school when my kids went to school, I went back to school to get my degree. Um, so I was in the throes, I think, of like finals for one of my semesters. And so I just didn't pick it back up again. So I stopped the season, like the beginning of season two. And I actually watched season one. Um, not really season, I watched like four episodes of season one, um, like two years ago. Um, because I was just interested in it. Because my brother and I went to go see the Downton Abbey movie. Which is so I don't remember weird. why they did that. Because so, they were sold out or it was a they, different time they or was, something? No, there was no other movies that we wanted to watch. And Dale and I wanted to go have like a sister-brother bonding thing. So they went to Downton Abbey then, with no well, background we know, knowledge. We didn't know it was a series. So when we walked in there, it was like previously on Downton Abbey. And we were like... <laughs> That's so, so then it talks but we got a background and we were fine with it but I was so confused about but the then whole thing. Dalen does not watch Dalen doesn't watch movies. that so but then he would laugh at what um, the countess said like the bickering between the two old ladies oh, I love her as an actress anyways I love her she's mm-hmm. amazing so Dalen laughed at she's that she's McGonagall on Harry Potter yeah I know I, I knew I noticed yes! her I knew I noticed her McGonagall on Harry Potter I love amazing. McGonagall and also Sister Act she's that she's the I've never seen Sister Act the mean the I've mean nun Sister Act what? Never seen Sister mm-hmm. Act. Guess we're going to have to do that later. Oh. Um, but anyway, so we already went through. So we watched the first season, but we watched like one or two at night after work and work in school. And we, we yesterday we had <laughs> we had three episodes left of season one yesterday. We went to bed last night oh, on like episode two? seven of season two. Episode seven. And we were on episode. I um, don't know how we did that. We were on episode six. No. We were Five. On- Five of season five. one. So we watched five, six, and seven because there was um there's only yeah. seven episodes and we watched one, two, three, four. I five. don't even. I mean, we did start early. We started and six. like six. We watched nine episodes. We started at like five thirty. So we after did. work, after dinner, we started early and we stayed up late. But dang, it was so good. And we're still we're like on a roll. And we I, and I think I was okay with ending it because first of all I was tired. Second of all, that last one was very emotional. Like I was oh like, oh my I gosh, can't, just can't stop I was crying. crying. I was like. <laughs> But we're watching but it's a not lot sobbing tonight. crying. It's it's like it's like tearing up. In it's my not opinion. sobbing crying. It's not a walk to remember crying. It's okay. Not... I didn't sob and walk to remember. I just okay. the fact that Brooke does not sob during a walk to remember should or... should foreshadow <laughs> or give you a little background of her. Like it's so weird. How are you a Hufflepuff and you don't sob? Okay, okay. During a walk to remember or what is that other? Um, me before you, you guys. If you really want one, like a notebook, you want to you want to cry your eyes out. Me before you. It's amazing. The actors are amazing. Everybody's great. Um, you will cry just as much the second time. And okay, I watched the first one though when I was on the airplane <laughs> by myself. Do not do that. Do not watch a movie you're not sure that you're gonna cry on because when you're sobbing on the plane when you're by yourself, people get concerned for you. Like I was ugly crying, like trying to like hide my face and be like, oh my god. It was terrible because they can't, they don't know what you're watching. They just see you ugly crying next to them on the seat and it's embarrassing. But I was like, I'm okay. I'm just like, you're like was, tearing up just thinking about the movie. It was so great. It, oh my gosh. It's, it, it's honestly, a great movie. It was really, it was like a happy ending. What? I Don't spoil it, but what? <laughs> I can't even. Okay, I, you guys, if you've watched it, you understand my what? <laughs> if you haven't watched it and you want to cry, you will understand. Go, go um, and watch it. But then I wa- I did watch The Notebook, and that broke my barrier. Of- <laughs> she, so I was like, hey, Brooke, you're going to cry at The Notebook. Then she comes in my room, and she's like, I didn't even cry. I'm like, who are you? How but do you then- not cry? And then she was explaining to me, but she's like, but it was really sad at the ending. And she was talking it out, and then she started sobbing. I was, like, ugly. I, it was and she so- wouldn't stop. I was like, what's the matter with you? Why are you crying so- now? You didn't cry when it was happening? Um, but then... um. But then uh, the Star Wars movies, I sobbed so much the okay. Star Wars movies. She doesn't cry on a watch, remember? <laughs> or me before you. I don't, but a Star Wars movie. Okay. Anakin, is, he, Anakin came back. It was 
so sad. That's what makes her cry, guys. I don't. And she I was, still don't cry. I walked my room. son and I were looking like, what is the matter with you? I don't cry in that stuff. I cried in Rogue One. I cried in all of she Star Wars. She cried movies. in all of them. But not a walk to remember or me before you. I don't cry in those type of movies. It's like weird. It's like, um. Yeah, it's weird. Well, it's because I kind of like shut it out in my mind. I kind of like don't accept it and I make my own plot line. But then what about Star Wars? You're like okay with that? Star Wars? You shouldn't cry in Star Wars. I know. <laughs> I know you shouldn't cry in Star well, Wars. Well, no. So in a walk Except to remember. Last one. In a walk to remember. Um, if you guys seen Friends, Phoebe when they're watching oh, yeah. the old Yeller, she goes the end, the end, because like that. Um, but then when it comes to a walk to remember, like right before she. I don't want to spoil it. Right before she tells him something, I like, I'm like, the end, the end. I completely Which shut it off. like halfway through the movie. So you no, stop it's three fourths. It's three fourths through the movie. <laughs> and I've actually already seen the whole entire movie. I just, and didn't cry, so. I didn't you didn't cry, cry that time either. No, I didn't. There's something wrong with I her. I thought it was happy. There's she, something wrong with her. It's actually, it's actually a happy ending. She, she, she. See, I know that I cry in those movies, which is why I don't watch them usually. So if Brooke's oh, like, oh, let's watch this movie. And I'm like, am I going to cry? Then no. Like, I don't feel, I need to be emotionally ready. Yeah, I already told my, I'm actually already convinced my mom. If you guys have seen Words on Bathroom Walls that came out recently, that's you're probably gonna cry in that. And I'm preparing myself. Yeah, she's prepared okay, for it because okay. I've already told her about it when it first came. When like it's, it was like the thing came out. Damn, okay. that, dang, that went. On I was for like, a while. oh my gosh, we just like uh, we that just... was only supposed to be a short section, guys, but we just got so excited. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, so I think that's it. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. Go follow us on Instagram at Sweet Pea and Chickity. Follow me on Ravelry if you want to see all my project stuff I got going on with Kay Armini. I'll link all that stuff below in show notes. Um, other than that, see you next time. Bye. Bye.